Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As many of you have joined from different countries and different time zones. We welcome to our homeopathy study group pro bono webinar hosted by Kavita Holistic Approach. Before we start, we would thank the universe for giving us this great opportunity with Gayatri Mantra chanted by Professor Regina from Brazil. I would like to take the privilege to say that our Ka homeopathy study group is very unique homeopathy pro bono study group from the United States of America, which formed to unite world renowned practitioners throughout the globe. Ka's mission and vision are very unique to inspire young homeopaths, mentor, provide excellency for educational purposes using holistic approaches via webinars, which provide professional continuing educational homeopathic credits for practitioners, which follow the principles of classical homeopathy, and we invite speakers for HNI accredited webinars. We value and treasure the human collective as our honorable peers. We provide merit certificate for spreading the light of homeopathy worldwide while celebrating stage four cancer survivors through our inspirational book talks. These webinars are for educational purposes only and see expert homeopath for treatment. This is Kavita Bobunur, board certified homeopath from Michigan USA, president MC of Kavita Holistic Approach, founder and director of Koka Homeopathy Study Group. I am outreach coordinator of CHC PR committee encouraging homeopaths to become CHC certified. I am a member of Kevin Friendly Foundation, a non-profit organization that helps to serve poor people in greater needs in India. I thank our homeopathy study group and Thai team for the continuous support. This webinar is moderated by Ka family, Dr. Sveta Singh, Chief Administrator and Professor Regina Riamendi. It is being recorded as we speak and we are live on Facebook. Boa Swaha, Tak Savitur Varenian, Bargo Devasya de Marie, Dio Yona Prachodaya. Many blessings to the universe. Thank you, Dr. Sweta and Professor Regina. Hello, everyone, and hope you are all doing well in this pandemic crisis and unprecedented times. Today, January 24th, 2021, we have a very interesting topic that is about Ayurvedic Reset Diet in Practice of Homeopathy by Dr. Vatsala Sperling. And also another important topic, how you and National Center for Homeopathy can expand homeopaths, homeopathy's reach worldwide by Dr. Laurie Grassman, President of NCH. It is great privilege to introduce to our honorable speakers for today's webinar. Dr. Vatsila Sperling is an experienced and renowned homeopathic practitioner, grew up in India, earned her doctorate in clinical microbiology and a gold medal from President of India for extraordinary scholarship. Before moving to the United States in 1990s, she was the chief of clinical microbiology at the Child's Trust Hospital in Chennai, India where she published extensively and conducted research with the World Health Organization. As a certified homeopath, Vatsala runs an international practice of classical homeopathy from Vermont, USA. She has served on the board of directors of the North American Society of Homeopaths, Case Review Committee of Council for Homeopathy Certification, Speaker Selection Committee for the Joint American Homeopathy Conference. She publishes frequently in Hedgepathy Spectrum, Homeopathy Today, The American Homeopath and Links. Vatsala has authored 10 books. Uh, few uh, To name few, For Seven Lifetimes, How Ganesh Got His Elephant Head, and her latest are Classic Tales from India and the Ayurvedic Reset Diet. Vatsala, her husband, Ihud Sperling, and their son, Mahar, are actually promoting education by giving numerous scholarships to children in USA and Costa Rica where they are also engaged in reforestation project and they work tirelessly for protection of native species of flora and fauna. So far they have planted over 10,000 trees and as Vatsala says the work has just started. 
and Vatsla can be reached via www.rochesterhomeopathy.com vs at innertraditions.com. I sincerely thank Dr. Vatsala and my guru who inspired me in 2010 to fold my life experiences in the form of book Beyond the Limits, where proceeds of the book were donated to charitable and homeopathic organizations. By God's grace, the book has touched the hearts of many like-minded people in the past 10 years. Vatsala is one of my dearest friends for past 12 years. At the end of the webinar, we welcome a very special guest, National Center for Homeopathy President, Laurie Grossman. As in 2020, we have been doing several videos promoting Joint American Homeopathy Jack Conference through a study group. And many of the participants were very curious to know about these Jack Conferences and also to learn more about NCH. So stay tuned until the end of the webinar. Thank you so much to everyone for participating and for your precious time. Let us welcome our first honorable speaker, Dr. Vatsila Sperling to our webinar. Dr. Vatsila, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. It. Okay. First of all, a big apology for my uh, technology ignorance. I'm blessed with it uh, enormously. So um, apologies for that. Uh, we began this session by recounting uh, the presence of elderly amongst us and a lot of uh, odd things going on with regards to COVID and everything. So please allow me to say a universal prayer. It will take 0.5 seconds at the most. And it is not just for us or, or our patients, our clients, it's for humanity in general. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would like to start today. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niramaya Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Ma phale dukha bhag bhavet Om shanti hi shanti hi shanti hi So Dr. Kavita Thank you very much for being this powerhouse, promoting homeopathy all over the world. And on top of that, inviting me to present uh, to your group of uh, practitioners and students. I am truly honored. And today I will be talking about a book that I recently wrote. Uh, as homeopaths, oh, also before that, all the participants, thank you so much for being here. Even though we are uh, spread around the world and we are looking at each other through the screen, there is a sense of connectivity. Something holds us together and that is very precious. That could be the remnant energy of Hahnemann. I don't know what it is, but something holds us all together. And that connectivity, the ethereal connectivity is truly precious. I honor that. So, as homeopaths, you all must be familiar with aphorism. Uh, where is the next slide? Let me see. Yeah. Aphorism 94. We'll go to that. But just one more second. Here is the book that I'm going to talk to you about. The Ayurvedic Reset Diet, Radiant Health Through Fasting, Mono Diet, smart food combining and smart food combining. So uh, this is the book apparently about Ayurvedic reset diet, but I'm a homeopath. So what am I doing with Ayurvedic reset diet? Hold on, you will hear it and you will see that it all makes sense. All the pieces of the puzzle do come together and you are going to say, yay, Ayurvedic reset diet. All right. So uh, you know, uh, Aphorism 94 by Samuel Hahnemann. Uh, just read it. 
while inquiring into the state of chronic disease, the particular circumstances of the patient with regard to his ordinary occupation, his usual mode of living and diet, his domestic situation and so forth must be well considered and scrutinized to ascertain what there is in them that may tend to produce or to maintain disease in order that by their removal, the recovery may be prompted. So Hahnemann considered diet as a cause that aids in maintaining disease way, way before the word diet became fashionable. He knew it, that old man, he just knew it. Another thing that Hahnemann did in his chronic diseases, he wrote on 131 page number, among the mishaps which disturb the treatment only in a temporary way, I enumerate overloading the stomach. This may be remedied by hunger. That is by only taking a little thin soup instead of a meal and a little coffee. That is interesting. He knew that people have a tendency to overload the stomach and that problem can be eliminated by uh, uh, introducing a bit of hunger, just a slight amount of hunger. So this is what he wrote. And how did I combine these teachings into homeopathy? That's the question, excuse me. Uh, I was a newbie a few, many years ago, I was a newbie, just, just freshly graduated, freshly starting my practice, wide-eyed, hopeful, optimistic, I can change the world. I hadn't seen Obama then. He talked about all the changes, but I hadn't met him yet, but I was full of ideas for changing the world. Oh, well. So when patient comes, 27 years old, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, uh, sorry to use the word obese because people take offense, but my first look at her was clinically obese. Uh -huh. So 24 seven fatigue, extreme exhaustion, uh, the slide keeps jumping on me. Foggy mind, lack of concentration, recurrent sore throats, headaches, muscle and joint pain, dizziness, unrefreshing sleep, inability to fall asleep, digestive upsets, too many to mention. So I faced a dilemma. Well, as I have been trained in homeopathy, I said, I'm going to ask her what she eats. So she was very happy to tell me what she eats. Here is on the screen, breakfast enormous with four fried eggs, slices of bread and jam, bacon, four cups of coffee with sugar and milk, so on and so forth. I went through her entire eating regimen. There was no mention of fruits or vegetables, not even a mention not even a mention of a glass of water. It, it just wasn't there. There was coffee, soft drinks, fruit, um, milkshake, um, juices, uh -huh. and Coca-Cola, a lot of it. So that was basically she was doing. This was way back in 2008. Uh -huh. So just one sec. What was remarkable in this uh, person's visit to my office was she came to my office with a bag of potato chips and a, a family size bottle of Coca-Cola. I saw that and I said, oh my God. In my heart, I said, oh my God. But you know, I held my tongue. I said, she started munching on it. And I said, you know, she's at ease. She's chilled out on my sofa. She is looking peaceful. She is talking to me. She is munching on her chips and her uh, sipping her Coca Cola. You know, I'm biting my tongue. I'm not going to interrupt her. Let me observe. Maybe I'll get some clue about what is going on here. Uh -huh. So I kept quiet. I didn't tell her, don't eat my, in my office, keep the Coca Cola bottle out. I didn't tell her anything. I said, well, be, be my guest. Do what you need to do. So I heard her whole case. I saw what she eats. Then the question came, shall I tell her the truth or not? That was my dilemma, to speak the truth or not. See, here is the catch. 
if I told her the truth early on in my practice, I ran the risk she might go away, she'll never come back. She say, she might say, I came to you for homeopathy and you're giving me a lecture about food, go away. So who knows, you know, people take offense. So I didn't feel like telling her the truth, but then I had to overcome the urge. I told her, look, sorry. So I told her, look, for any medicine or any remedy or any doctor's intervention to work for you, you will have to clean up your diet. What you are eating is not working for you. It has to go. So will you be okay if I made some suggestions? Uh, she thought about it. She went away. And I thought that was the end of it. She's not going to come back. Oh, 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 oh. A week later, she's back. I was surprised. I said, who, what happened? So here she is. Then that became my movement to talk to her about food, about diet, about Ayurvedic reset diet. That's when I began. That client was my teacher, was my inspiring being who said, you know, speak the truth when it is necessary. Face the demon which is sitting in the room. Talk to them. You are a homeopath. It's okay. But food intake is a problem, then talk to them. Uh -huh. Remember what Hahnemann said, food as the maintaining cause. Tackle the maintaining cause. If you don't do that, what remedy is going to do anything? So we have to handle the maintaining cause. And I'm going to tell you how Ayurvedic Reset Diet gives you that particular tool to handle maintaining cause. All right, next. So it turns out, there are many different illnesses that are uh, directly connected with diet intake, with faulty diet. So you can read on the list, obesity, hypertension, diabetes, osteoporosis, so on and so forth. So it turned out from University of Washington, from 1990 to 2017, a group of scientists did a global burden of disease study, and they came to a conclusion, very interesting. Uh -huh. Tobacco kills 8 million people, hypertension kills 10.4 million people, but bad diet kills 10.9 million people. See, the thing is, people are not eating less unless they are in refugee camp or war field or I don't know, they are below poverty line, they don't get 200 calories in a day. That is another spectrum of people. In general, the regular people whom we meet in our day-to-day -day life, they're not eating less. They're not eating enough of foods that are good for them. Uh -huh. This girl in my office, she was eating two hours of intake. She was continuously eating. What did she eat? She didn't eat almonds. She was eating potato chips. Uh -huh. So she's not eating less. She's not eating enough of the food that is good for them, good for her. All right. So, <clears throat> so in insisting that this girl clean up her diet, my education as a homeopath did come in, in play, but also what came in play is my background in Ayurveda. Uh -huh. Now, I didn't go to school for Ayurveda. I went to school to become a clinical microbiologist, which I became, uh -huh, and I had a thriving career in clinical microbiology with research with World Health Organization and so on. And I worked in a children's hospital, largest private sector children's hospital, multi-speciality hospital in Chennai. So that was clinical microbiology. I had a great time. Uh -huh. I didn't go to school to study Ayurveda. But what happened, I grew up with it. Uh -huh. In my family, there was a tradition of Ayurveda. So I just from my childhood, I grew up with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. So uh, before I diverge into this, uh, my background in Ayurveda, just quickly to close that case that I was describing to you, the, the girl with um, eating issues. When we started working with her with Ayurvedic reset diet, her problems began to calm down. 12 years later, she's still in my practice. She does not talk about chronic fatigue syndrome anymore because it's not there anymore. She comes for something else and I always am able to help her. And we have an absolute healthy, positive client 
a healer relationship. Uh -huh. So that was from that Ayurvedic reset diet. So before I go on into Ayurvedic reset diet, which I told you I grew up with Ayurveda, I'll tell you what is Ayurveda. Without jamming your brain with a lot of information about Ayurveda, I have to tell you a little bit at least to see how you can apply it without being an Ayurvedic practitioner, you can apply it in your day-to-day -day practice. Hita hitam sukham dukham, ayus tasya hita hitam, manam cha yatroktam ayurveda sa uchyate. This is a Sanskrit shlok from Charak Samhita. And the meaning is Ayurveda is a Veda that provides the knowledge of good, bad, happy, and unhappy life. Its promoters, where is it? Its promoters and non-promoters, measurement and nature. This is what is the definition of Ayurveda in Charak Samhita. So, turns out, Ayurveda is the oldest form of medical care. Let's, let's stay here for a while. It's the oldest form of medical care in, used in India. It has medicine and surgery uh, disciplines. It helps. It's the oldest known body, mind and spirit medicine. Uh -huh. So a little bit of background. In India, it is believed that Ayurveda was revealed to the ancient wise men, the rishis, by Dhanvantadi the celestial physician to the gods in the heaven. We are very godly people. We Indians, for everything, there is a god. We have 33 million gods. Go figure. Uh -huh. So for many thousands of years, the rishis passed down the oral tradition, the knowledge of Ayurveda to the subsequent generations of healers. And presently, this medical speciality is taught in Ayurveda medical schools. And the textbooks are available in Sanskrit. Uh -huh. So. Going back to my roots in Ayurveda, <clears throat> I grew up in Jamshedpur, India, in a household with five older siblings and very lovely set of parents. They were very nice people. Uh -huh. uh, they were raised using Ayurveda and they raised us using Ayurveda. Uh -huh. They had learned from their parents. My mom took us to homeopaths for little things, uh, whatever she thought they should be handling it. Dr. Sinha, who has passed away. Dr. Sagu, who was my childhood homeopath. Namaste, Dr. Sagu. I spoke to him in 2012. He was still practicing in a uh, charitable clinic in Jamshedpur. And now his son runs his practice. Uh -huh. So the my experience of Ayurveda goes back to my uncompensated state in my childhood. Uh -huh. So as a family, we celebrated Diwali. India is full of festivals. Every one month there is some grand festival and the whole country is jumping up and down celebrating the festival. Diwali, nobody escapes. Uh -huh. It's the lights and firecrackers, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, everybody does something for Diwali. It's a big, big happy situation in that country during Diwali. So what happens? We eat, we eat, we eat, we eat. And what you see here, two platters, one of savory treats and one of sweet treats, that is given to you after an enormous main course. So you eat up to your eyeball and then the desserts and the savory treat, treats appear. So we love to eat. Uh -huh. Little children gorging on happy food. So obviously, next day the tummy is talking. There is either vomiting or loose stool or a little feverish or constipated, mommy this, mommy that. Five, six children in the house uh, with upset stomach is a lot for my, my mom to deal with, but she was a bold woman. Uh -huh. She didn't get frightened with anything. So she will tell us, langhanam parama aushadham. Fasting is the ultimate medicine. Yesterday we were feasting and today we have to fast. Uh -huh. Then she also quoted a Tamil poet saint, Tiruvalluvar, and she said, one who eats once a day is a yogi, one who eats twice a day is a bhogi, the enjoyer, one who eats three times a day is a rogi, sick person. By that definition, about 
80, 95 percent of the population will come in the third category because we do eat three times a day. What does it do to us? Uh -huh. That's what we have to wonder. Okay. What mother is saying here, the Langanam Parama Aushadam, it also reminds me nowadays uh -huh, of chronic disease, page 131, among the mishaps which disturb the treatment only in a temporary way, I enumerate overloading the stomach, which may be remedied by hunger. That is by only taking a little thin soup instead of a meal and a little coffee. Uh -huh. So Hahnemann knew it, who founded homeopathy. My mother knew it, who had received Ayurvedic knowledge through ancestors, and I learned from her. Uh -huh. So that's the kind of a chain of command, a trickling down of experience or knowledge. Okay, so how did she accomplish what she said? Langhanam Parama Aushadam, fasting is the best medicine. How did she do that? She gave us a simplified eating pattern rooted deeply in Ayurvedic principles, eliminating the problematic food, fasting on water to flush and cleanse the digestive system, eating one extremely simple, light and easy to digest food. Actually, you will be surprised. Common sense is usually very simple. And that's what it's, it is, common sense, simplified eating pattern. With these three steps, we were able to get over the problem right away. We didn't have to go to any doctor. He, he didn't have to give us an anti-emetic and a stool binder and a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, which ends up inflammating the stomach even more. So we just totally escaped going to the doctors uh, from these complaints. Mom just took care of it at home based on Ayurvedic principles. Uh -huh. Okay. So in as I grew up, I, I got very curious about, gee, this is the thing it can accomplish, Ayurveda can accomplish, what else it can do? So I explored, but as I focused my energy in homeopathy, what worked for me, the niche that worked for me is uh, not prescribing Ayurvedic medicines, herbs and lotions and potions for various disease conditions, because I'm not an Ayurvedic practitioner, but what worked for me is how to deploy or use Ayurveda for elimination of maintaining causes in diet related maladies that I see uh, very, very often in my practice. Problems connected with diet, Ayurvedic reset diet. It worked very well, beautifully. Uh -huh. And the problem goes away and the remedies have a better opportunity, better chance to work. Uh -huh. Okay, so. Here is a common picture of hunters in the United States. Uh -huh. Every fall or throughout the year, there are various hunting seasons. There are some hunters who are die hard. They will hunt, they'll bring the meat home, their freezer is full of that meat. That's what they eat throughout the year. There are some hunters who are kind of a buddy club. They'll go to the hunting camp, hunting lodge with a good supply of beer and snacks and such. They'll hang out with their buddies. If they get a kill, great. If they don't, they come back home, they're okay. But why I'm telling you this uh -huh. about hunters in the United States, what does that have to do with Ayurveda? I'll tell you what. The next group of hunters that do come to my mind is the Aborigines of Australia. Uh -huh. Look, he's an Aborigine man trying to hunt kangaroos and he's another Aborigine man. They use wooden spears and sticks and little stones for their hunting expedition. He's trying to catch some fish or something in the water. Uh -huh. So what is this about American hunters and Aborigine hunters? Uh -huh. This is what the connection is. I have to take you back to a little bit of uh, what these Aborigines are about. Uh -huh. So um, they did not read and write. They lived in Australia for uh, 150,000 years before colonization. They didn't read and write. They didn't own land, cash, house, diamonds, golds, uh, gold, vehicles, 
uh, and so on. They didn't weave or wear clothes. They didn't have army, police, Donald Trump or uh, Biden. They didn't have all that. They didn't have tradesmen. Uh -huh. So you'll think, oh, there's some wild people running around. Why, why, why should I tell you about them? They're gone. Why should I tell you about them? Here is why. We might even think they're brutes, old fashioned, uncultured, underdeveloped, not modernized. They are kind of some kind of brutes. They should be eliminated. I'll tell you about a book that will make you change your mind. It will spin your head. It spun mine and it's still, still spinning actually. Here is the book, Aborigines, whether they're brutes or gentlemen, figure out by reading this book. It's the book which will tell you about the origins of humanity in the whole planet, how the whole thing happened. Uh -huh. So if they didn't do reading, writing, what, what did they do? What did they do? They had oral transmission of knowledge, of their ancestral knowledge, of hunting spots, uh, edible herbs and plants and medicinal plants, water holes. Uh -huh. Men went for hunting expedition. Women gathered plant-based food. They ate local food according to the season. They did not destroy the ecosystem. They found culture, medicine, food, recreation, spiritual transformation, and freedom from suffering by living as one with nature. Mm -hmm. That's what they accomplished. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out when I did my research, hunter-gatherer, as the Aborigine tribes were known, they were hunting, they were gathering, so hunter-gatherer, those uh, type of people, they were found all over the world. And in the Indian yoga system, there is a clear mention of that. Uh -huh. See, Indian yoga system is a cyclical event. It's not a linear event. So it doesn't subscribe to the idea that the world was created 5,000 years ago and it will end in 5,001 or something. It doesn't subscribe to that. It goes for a cyclical pattern. So in Satya Yuga, 1,728,000 years ago, humanity as a whole existed as hunter-gatherers. Uh -huh. Next, in Treta Yuga, 1,296,000 years ago, uh, agriculture, fixed flock farm, farming, it came about, and vegetarianism as a choice began to emerge. Because people began to grow food, they could choose not to hunt. Uh -huh. Whereas hunter-gatherers, they had to hunt and eat animal foods, and they had to gather to get the plant-based nutrition. So they did that. Next comes Dwapara Yuga. 864,000 years ago, they began animal husbandry, having groups of cattle for milk or meat and so on. Now, the fourth yuga in this cycle, sorry, is Kali Yuga, 432,000 years. This is the age of technology and speed. Uh -huh. it, some people call it the dark ages. Kali is dark goddess. So dark age or age of technology and speed, that's what it is. Just one moment. Okay. What, how does Kali Yuga get its definition? What happens in Kali Yuga? Uh -huh. See, it's the industrial age. Uh -huh. We can't escape that. It is the industrial age and thank God it is there. That's how I'm able to talk to all of you. I don't know which countries you are located in, but because of technology, because of industrialization, we have a computer on our lap and we are talking to the whole world. Uh -huh. So that is the time we live in. But what has happened is dehumanization, enslavement and mass murders and displacement of people from every continent on earth, the native hunter-gatherer tribes have been displaced or vanished or killed off. Uh -huh. Decimation of their art and culture and their stories, decimation of their food source, flora and fauna. Uh -huh. Now, we are based on exploitation of natural resources to the point of extinction, deforestation, 
a timber and mining city building agriculture and farming for that we need more and more and more land so we just take off forests uh -huh. sorry and in the end the modern man sits on top of the ruin of the past holding his cell phone uh -huh. that's kind of an image we get the modern man okay this industrial era and colonization has led to uh, people migrating to the cities for office related work they, they, they are living in cities they are not living out there in the farms when they they are city bound people they have no land to grow food and the people who are deep into farming and in the past like in 1800s and 1700s farmers and slaves they were forced to eat three meals a day for hard manual labor they were just forced uh -huh. so what happened that habit remained with us uh -huh. the and uh, the habit of maybe 250 years ago people were forced uh, people were moving to the cities they were getting away from manual and farm labor they were living in cities so they started attracting food sources to the city and then the industrialization happened and the phrase that defines us nowadays i shop therefore i am see this is the uh, supermarket aisle everybody recognizes that and that's the shopping cart we work very hard to push those shopping carts and we get all those packaged food see why i'm showing you this picture this aborigine people who hunted and gathered the native adivasi tribes in india some of them still exist they hunted and gathered in every continent the back of humanity there was a uh, hunting and gathering going on and uh, that culture has stopped uh -huh. but when it was going on they ate local they ate natural they ate what is in the season uh -huh. they ate original healthy food uh -huh. in this aisle where do you see seasonal food where do you see local food where do you see healthy food it's all made in a factory somebody made it for their profit and they advertised it on the tv so it landed in the supermarket and we have nothing better to do so we buy that and we are eating it three times a day as meals few snacks in between year round year after year from childhood till we fall into our graves that is what we are doing we are eating 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 and eating some more the industrial food not the normal natural healthy food but industrialized food it is overloading our stomach with faulty food that's what is happening and we are stuck in that rut huh? that is where i will tell you how ayurvedic reset diet is going to be of help to you in your practice of help to your clients when they are stuck in such a rut you can help them you can help yourself uh -huh. so that's where ayurvedic reset diet comes in <clears throat> uh, again a little bit of mention of this aborigine people who were hunter gatherers see they went on a hunting expedition a uh, woman went on gathering expedition they uh, came back with their hunt or their gathered material not always they got sometimes they didn't get sometimes when they got it they ate they enjoyed their meal when they didn't get it they fasted fasted fasting was built into their natural natural rhythm same thing with animals a big cat goes hunting it gets a prey it eats then it's digesting it's not going to hunt again next day because it's happy its stomach is full it will wait it's digesting it and it's fasting so fasting is a natural phenomenon built into the human cycle of eating but we as modern people have lost sight of it uh -huh. for industrialization to give any reason we have lost sight of that uh -huh. and that is where i'll make the connection for you okay this i already told you okay uh, so from this uh, round the clock eating habit 
what ha what has become of us is we live to eat we don't eat to live uh -huh. one example everybody is familiar with mcdonald right everybody knows that golden arch in this innocent looking bun there are 36 ingredients all man made uh -huh. uh, you can imagine 36 ingredients whereas you can make a nice bun at home with flour salt sugar and water uh -huh. so this this food that we think is looking like food it comes in nice packaging and it has all the nutritional label written on top it has lovely pictures and we see ads on the tv what what is the danger lurking in it mm -hmm. when it is a plant-based material from agriculture there is monoculture with depleted soil uh -huh. a wheat farmer is a generation of wheat farmer all his life his next generation, everybody is doing wheat farming on the same ground. The soil is depleted. To replenish the soil, he uses chemical fertilizers and all kinds of chemicals, which if you just ate, you'll fall dead. But it's introduced into your food. Uh -huh. Okay, so that is the monoculture, genetically engineered seeds and so on. And that goes on. So you'll think, okay, you know, I don't want to eat all the chemicals which comes from agricultural plant-based sources, that's awful. I'm going to switch to um, what they call Atkin diet, all animal food, and it's so good for you. It's so high in protein, and I don't have to worry about agricultural chemicals. Well, there is a catch again. Animal factories, the producers of meat products and such, number one problem, there is needless and excessive cruelty. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not saying you don't need to eat meat or you have to all become vegan and vegetarian. That's a myth that nobody will become like that. The whole humanity has its own destiny of, I want to be a vegan, vegan, whatever they want to eat, that's okay. Uh -huh. But that excessive cruelty, somewhere down the line, we are going to pay a price for it. Uh -huh. You hunt, you slaughter your own animal, that's okay. But to have mass murder facility for animals, that seems a bit over the top. Uh -huh. Those animals are given artificial feed all, all the time, antibiotics, growth hormones, artificial insemination, no exercise, zero exercise, zero fresh air and sunlight. Uh -huh. Animals are essentially egg, meat and milk producing machines. They're not treated as uh, live creatures. Uh -huh. Okay. On this subject, here is a free-range cow. She has a little calf having milk and she can graze on this grass. I see this all the time in Costa Rica. Uh -huh. They have free-range cows and they're running around in the field and all group of them. This is in the factory. So the cow is standing in its place. It cannot turn. It cannot sit. It, it faces, stands, stands facing food. And from the rear, its excreta is going out. And the only purpose in that uh, factory is to fatten it up, get a certain weight before a certain time so that she can be sent for slaughter. To get more ideas about this particular topic that I'm talking to you, read this book, Beyond Beef by Jeremy Rufkins. Magnificent book. A whole book is an assembly of truth what goes on with your food system. Uh -huh. Okay. So having told you all these things that are not right with modern food and the way we eat, the lot of food, we eat a lot of food. Uh -huh. I've told you all that. That is called whining. I have whined to you for however long you have been listening. I've been complaining to you about everything. But that's not the solution. Where is the solution, right? You're not going to stop eating. You're not going to uh, live on air. You have to live. We live and we need food. So what to do? That is where Ayurvedic Reset Diet comes in. And I have found it very, very useful in my practice. And I'm hoping you will be able to incorporate for your clients in your practice too. What does it do? It resets and reboots. Digestive health, immune system, relationship with food, all that is reset. It minimizes the effects of Virudha Ahara. What is this Virudha Ahara? It's a Sanskrit word. I will tell you in a minute. But right now, bear with me. Virudha Ahara. 
So Ayurvedic Reset Diet supports, nourishes, sustains and energizes five koshas that make us who we are. Annamaya kosha, which is maintained by food. Pranamaya kosha, which is the life force. You can call it vital force. Manomaya kosha, which is the mind. Vijnanamaya kosha, Vigyanamaya kosha, which is our intellect. And Anandamaya kosha, which is blissful state. Our whole being is no nourished. Our whole being is reset and rebooted by this Ayurvedic reset diet. All right. So I told you, I'll tell you about Viridha Ahara. I keep my promise. If I tell you something that I'm going to say, I'm going to revisit that. I keep my word. Viridha Ahara. Incompatible when combined. Fish and milk. Wrongly processed, deep fried, burnt food, charred food, uh, boiled honey, inappropriate, inappropriate amounts, equal amounts of salt and sugar. If you do that, the recipe will be killed. Wrong time of the day, coffee at bedtime, vinegar on empty stomach, wrong season, watermelon in the snowy winters in Vermont. Forget about it, it's going to harm you. Wrong temperature. Boiling hot coffee with ice cream or frozen berries. Uh -huh. These are just some of the examples of Viruddha Ahara. Ayurveda has a whole list of them. Uh -huh. But these are incompatible food. Uh -huh. Okay. So let me go to the next one moment, please. Long silence. Okay. So you saw about Viruddha Ahara and uh, I told you about it. Now, I also told you what Ayurvedic reset diet can do or did I not tell you that? Maybe not. Okay. So, This is the one. Uh, you have heard now few times a mention of Ayurvedic reset diet. So you'll say, uh, you are pushing it too hard. You're telling me it does this, it does that and incorporate in your practice and it will change lives and blah, blah, blah. What does it really do? What are you claiming? What are you talking? So it reverses the effects of unhealthy eating habit. See, what was that first girl doing in my office? A whole bag of potato chips, right? Along with all the wrong foods that she ate. So that kind of food intake is going to have a problem. That is an unhealthy ET pattern and Ayurvedic reset diet reverses it. Then what it does, it repairs and rests the gastrointestinal tract. You need that because we are constantly eating. Our ancestors didn't do that. The hunter-gatherers didn't do that. They ate, they fasted. Animals don't do that. They eat, then they fast. But what do human beings do? They eat, they eat, they eat, and they want a little bit more food. Uh -huh. So we don't fast. That has gone, the memory of fasting has gone from our culture. So re repair of the gut is not happening on a routine basis. Ayurvedic Reset Diet gives you an opportunity to do that. It helps establish a mindful eating pattern that is important. All of you must have seen how people are biting on a sandwich while texting on the cell phone, catching a bus, running in the subway, and um, eating while they're holding a meeting. You've seen all that, right? That's not mindful eating. That's called shoveling food in your mouth. Uh -huh. So Ayurveda helps you reconnect with the mindful eating pattern. Uh -huh. Then it removes gut dysbiosis. Our bacterial flora in the gut is upside down. It's going bad. Uh -huh. So people are doing fecal transplants to re uh, uh, reset the gut bacteria. But I'm saying, why do that? Ayurvedic reset diet will help you with gut dysbiosis. Then it removes the maintaining causes of diet-related diseases. That is very important. Uh -huh. Then at the end, it also restores our sense of well-being and uh, what is it? Uh, some word is there. It's, it restores our sense of well-being. Uh -huh. 
and good health overall. Okay, so next question, how to do Ayurvedic reset diet? Because if, if it is so great and not doable, then what's the point? There is no point of this webinar, right? If it's so good, it has to be accessible to you. You have to be able to do it. You have to be able to inspire your patients to stick with it, your clients to stick with it. Very simple. It's simplicity at its best. Uh -huh. So it should be doable. How to do Ayurvedic reset diet? Beginning, fasting on water. Number two, isolating food, eating one type of food at a time fully absorb all the nutrients in a particular food that is happening and then mix foods from various food groups while avoiding viruddha ahara these are the five steps that you're going to do uh -huh. very easy to do so your question will be uh, probably why fast on water there is milk there is coffee tea fruit juice coca cola there is wine and alcohol. Can we not fast on those? Why do we have to fast on water? Because our body is like 65, 70, 83% in some tissues. It's water. Our lungs, 83% of water. Uh -huh. We are basically water with some uh, particles dissolve in it and given a little shape. Uh -huh. So that's what we are. So meet water with water. We are made of water with some other chemicals in it. So let's meet water in its purest form, not bubbly water, not carbonated water, not mineral water of this and that. Simple, humble water that you can find. Mm -hmm. What does it do? Just read. Unbelievable. It, it's the best thing that you can do for yourself. Cellular impurities are flushed. Digestive system, kidney, everything is flushed out. Oral bacteria, they begin to, bad ones begin to go away and good ones begin to colonize. Stomach acid and bile gets neutralized. It creates an alkaline pH so that uh, you won't be prone to a lot of infections. You get hydration. Uh -huh. Your gut can rest and recuperate and revive. Uh -huh. Inflammation comes down. Uh, glycogen, which is stored in the body for creating energy, that is beginning to get used because you're not supplying fresh glycogen, fresh source of glycogen. Autophagy gene is turned on. That is very important outcome of fasting. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Autophagy gene is turned on. So what happens, that gene is in all of us, but uh, it can go dormant sometimes. So the sick tissues overtake the body. But when you do the fasting and you do have this water fast, autophagy gene will turn on and it, the body will go to sick and old and injured tissues digest them, use the metabolites for regenerating, rejuvenating, recreating new cells, healthy, happy cells in your body. Uh -huh. At the same time, our innate body wisdom will know to go after non-self cells, uh -huh. invading bacteria and viruses and so on. They are, they are getting cleaned out and we get a higher level of in, immunity. So common sense question is, why won't you not fast on water? instead of asking me why fast on water. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. What is next? Let's see. Fasting. I told you about that. Okay. So next is, I told you in the list, isolation of food. Uh -huh. Look, if you have gone to an Indian restaurant, this is a regular vegetarian thali or meat thali. There is rice, roti, Sauces of two kinds, vegetables, yogurt, raw vegetables, dessert, rasgum, uh, what is this? Gulab jamun, uh, my favorite actually. So a whole platter of food. Huh? This one is meat and potatoes and uh, there is a little twig of, uh, what is it? Uh, one of the herbs. I see it in the US, I forgot its name right now. Um, people mostly pick it up and keep it on the side of the table. They don't want to eat it. They'll eat their meat and potato. Parsley. Okay. 
thank you, thank you, thank you. That is parsley. So that parsley is very gently picked up and removed, put away on the side so that they can have the meat and potatoes. Great. Okay. So food is looking great, right? I even told you I like that gulab jamun, this brown thingy, brown ball here, this one. I like it. It's nice. But what is happening is we are eating this food too frequently, too often, almost every day. So Ayurveda recognizes there are three types of food groups, rajasic, tamasic, and uh, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. Okay. So sattvic food is the holy, holy food, simple food, good for your food, tasteless food. It's nice. It will calm your stomach. It will calm your body. It will bring down the inflammation. It's a little bit boring, but it is good for you. Uh -huh. Rajasic food is highly spiced, fried, roasted, grilled, um, you know, very lot of sugar, lot of salt, lot of spices mixed. Your fire will start coming from ears and nose will start running. It gets a lot of people very upset. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are used to it, they enjoy it. That is the Rajasic food, the king's food. Raja is king. Uh -huh. Sattvic is the saintly food. Raja is the king's food. So that is a lot of people use that. Uh -huh. Then comes the tamasic food, which can be quite spoiled, old, rotten, tasteless, bad, reheated, refrozen, um, rethawed, microwaved, uh, blah, blah, blah. The, everything that you can do bad to a food. Huh? So that is the tamasic food mm -hmm. and it causes a lot of uh, lack of interest and enthusiasm, anger and guilt and regret, sense of loss, inner sense of darkness and pain, hindered peristalsis, constipation, tamasic food. It's too heavy on the body. Rajasic and tamasic food are good at upsetting the balance of your tridosha. Vata, pitta and kapha, they're going to go out the window. Uh -huh. They're going to be so upset that year after year, we keep doing this kind of food to us. Our vata, pitta, kapha balance is going to dogs. Uh -huh. So sattvic food has the ability to restore it. Uh -huh. So when this rajasic and tamasic meal is eaten every day, three times a day for many, many years, we get sick. That is why in Ayurvedic reset diet, there is a facility for isolation of food groups, for resetting the body and keep starting a healthy digestive system. Mm -hmm. So in Ayurveda, it is said that when the body is not feeling well, you have to simplify the food. You don't combine the carbohydrates and the starches in the same meal because the digestion is happening at different locations in the GI tract. Different enzymes are required. Uh, um, proteins take longer to digest while carbohydrates take a little less time to digest and they start digesting right from your mouth with amylase in the saliva. So partially digested and undigested food, they're all sitting together in your gut, fermenting. The partially digested food, because it has nowhere to go, it's fermenting, making gas, making bloating, making inflammation, endless problems. Uh -huh. So Ayurveda says don't combine the two when you're not well. So it gives you a technique for isolating food. Huh? Same way, a lot of fat, a lot of deep frying and uh, trans fatty acids in a food and such, it, it, it kind of hinders the function of other enzymes because fat tends to float on top and it requires different side of uh, types of enzymes. It hinders the digestion of other foods. Uh -huh. So I'm not saying fat is bad or you must go zero fat. That is a myth. Nature has built fat into food. Nuts are full of fats, but that is good fat. That is not trans fat. Huh? That is not hydrogenated fat. So fat is part of life. Our Every cell has fat. So don't go for zero fat, no fat, low fat. Throw all that out. Go for healthy fat, little amount. Uh -huh. That's what is the savior. Okay. So... With this kind of rajasic and tamasic food, we have a way out. Uh -huh. We have to have a way out. And that is what Ayurvedic said diet does. It gives you a method for fasting routinely and periodically on water. It gives you a technique for isolation of food groups, 
proteins and carbohydrates, vegetables, and fruits to be eaten at different meals. It gives you a right eating combination of food. It does all of that. Uh -huh. So the next question among the curious participants of this seminar or webinar is, how do you do it? What is the nut and bolt? It all sounds good. How to do it? Look, in this, uh, in here, a huge crossed out, right? Everything on that list, you throw out from your pantry. When you decide to go on Ayurvedic Reset Diet, you go on a tour of your pantry, your freezer, your refrigerator, your kitchen, and go, list, go by this list. Remove all these items from your house. Just put them away, throw them out, give them away, do whatever. Do not allow them in the house. But then what are you going to do? Suddenly the fridge is looking empty and you need food in the house. So you go organic, locally and seasonally, seasonal fruits and vegetables, eggs and meat and so on. Meats which are raised and slaughtered humanely. Uh -huh. Go for whole legumes, fresh herbs, honey, whole grains, uh -huh. uh, cold pressed oils and butter and ghee if you want. Uh -huh. Organic whole grains and pastas and tortillas made from that and non-chlorinated non-bubbly, non-carbonated water. Uh -huh. So these are the things you will get. In the book, I have given a whole elaborate list of what you can shop, uh -huh. how, to, how to reorganize your kitchen to support you in your practice of Ayurvedic Reset Diet. Uh -huh. So the book will walk you through every step, every question of what you need to do, how you need to do, and what obstacles you might face and how to get around it. And the book is pretty slender. So it's not a 500 page book, you get sick of reading it. Uh -huh. It's a little book, a how to do book. Uh -huh. Okay. So I, I told you what to throw out and what to get. Uh -huh. Next, uh, da, 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 da. here you go. Now, one thing is uh, intentions, actions follow intentions. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a big believer in intention. What do you intend to do? Because when you set your intention, somehow your actions will be geared in that direction. Uh -huh. So setting the intention is important. When you meet your client, setting the intention to help them heal is important. Remedies and case taking and follow-ups come later. Exchange of money comes later. But you start with the intention of, I'm going to be of help. Uh -huh. So that is the intention part. Intent to stick with Ayurvedic Reset Diet. Then there is a practice of daily hygiene. And if you're a very holy, holy person, you like your prayers, you like your meditation, you can do that. And if you're an atheist, even better. Don't have to spend time doing all that. It's okay. Do what you believe in. Uh -huh. But exercise is not okay if you don't do. So exercise has to be there. Uh -huh. A routine of bowel movement. Then there has to be a designated meal time. It cannot be I'm munching like a cow throughout the day. That cannot happen. Uh -huh. so go back here, sorry. So meal time, you turn your TV and cell phone and radio, music, reading material, all of that, turn it off because they're dinging, dinging, dinging. You're constantly distracted from your meal. You focus your attention on your eating process. Sit down. You don't have to be running, walking, catching a bus or sleeping, lying down when you're eating. Sit down eat with all five fingers. Uh -huh. That allows you to connect with the food and all five of your senses are satiated. As a result, you do not overeat. Uh -huh. There is no overeating when you, sorry, eat with five fingers. Now, take your time. I mean, where are you going? Even if you rush, you are still on this planet. So take your time to eat. There is no need to rush. There is a specific time to eat a designated place to eat. It's clutter-free. It's beautiful. A little flower in a vase. Uh -huh. Now, if some guests show up, go ahead, offer them food. Don't have to close their door. Keep about six hours of gap between meals uh -huh. and 
amount of food that is important once somebody asked buddha how much to eat he said uh, you see like this this is my two palms held together that that's the size of a small dinner plate it's not mega super duper enormous size of dinner plate it's a small dinner plate in that put a little amount of food there is food it's not running away it's available to you so have a little bit of food enjoy it because after all food is there for your enjoyment enjoy it live it experience it uh -huh. and when you need more you can help yourself a little bit more now another part uh, eating is important fasting is important uh, getting rest about 7 6 hours of sleep in a dark room i won't say that about kavita because she is managing about in 5 hours of sleep she is super woman but regular people 6 hours 7 hours should be okay uh -huh. room is dark there are no alarms there are no electronic devices and your body is able to generate sufficient melatonin uh -huh. so these are actions follow intentions these are the ways you prepare your whole being to engage with the ayurvedic reset diet all right then here is a small example of the program you can do it for one week for four weeks for six weeks for eight weeks uh huh you can do all of that here i have given you just a six weeks plan when you review this uh, recording you can go over line by line but it has given a very distinct program about how to do and when you want to do it just don't go by the powerpoint you actually refer to the book because it has all the answers that you need okay now i will move to the effect of ayurvedic reset diet on body mind and spirit uh -huh. see just quickly just quickly to just give you a glimpse there are days of fasting on water and water and herb tea then there are days when you eat mono diet of one type of vegetables for all the meals or one type of fruit for all the meals and then there is a, a place for eating fruits and nuts and seeds lunch uh, bre breakfast lunch and dinner whole grains and so on and that you can repeat but that is the time in here where you are uh, sorry 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 when you are uh, allowing different food groups to come into your uh, radar and you are eating them in a fashion that you are not doing viruddha ahara you are eating food that are compatible to each other and you are allowing the food to process through your body before the next batch comes in uh -huh. so it's a very relaxed process and the best thing about it is you are not starving you are not hungry all the time you are not imagining food all the time because you are starving uh -huh. see what happens with most of the diets they overdo a certain aspect i'm not name calling say for example atkin diet he told people eat meat 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 and more meat and then few years later the study comes all the downside of it what the problem it is causing huh? then some people will go completely on one direction Uh -huh. they will only eat raw food uh -huh. so what happens the modern people are, have lost touch with what our hunter gatherers did how balanced their relationship was with the food how balanced and healthy the knowledge of food was they, they were one with nature they didn't think about science they were one with nature uh -huh. we cannot go back in time we cannot become hunter gatherers we cannot throw away our cell phone and my precious laptop i cannot do that right we have to live now in this generation in this time and we are happy to be here but we have to have tools that allow us to undo the damage remove the maintaining cause of food related problems uh -huh. because that food is all around us making us sick in many ways and this ayurvedic reset diet gives you that small practical doable little tool that will make a difference to you uh -huh. and that is the program i have given you 
And there is more in the book which describes, you know, the eight week program and so on. Some of my clients have continued it for months and they are very happy. So what does Ayurvedic reset diet do for the body, mind and spirit? Ayurveda is body, mind and spirit. Homeopathy is body, mind and spirit. Here, body fasting on water is cleansing. Mono diet on vegetables or fruits, it heals and repairs the GI tract, reverses the bad effect of Virudha Ahara, calorie reduction without hunger, without weakness, creates alkaline chemistry, and weight loss also happens. Even though I'll tell you, Ayurvedic Reset Diet is not for weight loss, not for wrinkle removal, not for making you size zero fashion model. Those are very superficial goals. I'm talking to you here about a deep life-changing experience when you go for Ayurvedic Reset Diet. I'm not talking to you about wrinkles and weight loss. That's not my interest. Uh -huh. I am interested in creating a situation for well-being from within. And that's what Ayurvedic Reset Diet is doing. So mono diet on fruits and vegetables accomplishes that alkaline chemistry and weight loss is a byproduct. I like that though. Uh -huh. Calorie reduction without feeling weakness because you are getting some food to eat. So you're not starving. Uh -huh. Smart combining, it helps fully digest one nutrient and extract nutrient from one food group and get ready for the next food group. Body feels lighter and fresher and cleaner. Blood chemistry begins to improve. Cholesterol comes down. A17 changes. Uh, lipid profile improves. Uh -huh. Blood sugar comes down. Manageable, becomes more manageable. What does it do to your mind? There is a periodic intake of fasting and a periodic intake of healthy food in moderate quantities. So your mind is at ease. You know your next meal is assured. You know you're not going to starve. Uh -huh. You're not going to be nutritionally deprived. So your mind is at ease. It's not fretting and fuming about food. Sorry. What does it do to your spirit? Your disposition, your energy, your enthusiasm for life improves from taking charge of your wellness. You didn't give charge of your wellness to somebody else who will write you a prescription and you're going to get okay. No, you are taking charge. You are leading your life. And that energy, that forward momentum gives you a positive spin. Your life narrative begins to change because you're taking charge of what you can do to help yourself. Okay, now I know I'm talking to a bunch of homeopaths. It is one hour and 25 minutes, but they're not going to be happy if I don't tell them about cases. So I have to tell you just two little cases, actually three. 53 year old man, he had a horrible car accident, made him a wreck. While he was recovering, he became a car junkie. That's what he calls himself. Uh -huh. I'm a car junkie with permanent sinus and skin conditions and constipation, he would go to toilet once in seven days, something like that. When he came to me, uh, I said, okay, homeopathy, that's what I do. So I started with sulfur, skin condition, lycopodium for too much carbohydrates, forinum for not ability to heal, nicolum, because he was very stingy also in some ways and allergic skin conditions, histaminum, graphite, bowel no sores and some other remedies. It, nothing is moving. Eh? I'm doubting myself. Geez, what a horrible homeopath. You're with your remedy. Nothing is changing. But the fellow keeps coming back. So I talk to him about Ayurvedic Reset Diet. I walk him through it. You know, they have questions. They, have, they get stuck somewhere. I provide that support. I'll help you through this. If you have a question, I'll walk you through this. So he agreed to come for that. And in a few months, he was down 40 pounds. So you, may, you can imagine how much extra he was carrying. And he says, I'm in the best of my health ever. Sinus problem is gone. He's not congested anymore. Skin is much, much, much better to the extent he doesn't have a skin problem anymore. And his constipation, he doesn't remember. He doesn't talk about it. He's fine. 
Then came two ladies, one is 23 years old, one is 60 years old, uh, laboratory diagnosed uh, helicobacter pylori cases, stomach ulcer with pains and acidity, burping, gas, a loosely formed stool with blood and jelly-like mucus, rumbling gas and bad flatulence. The young girl, she was so worried because she couldn't date. Uh, her boyfriends were getting turned off because of her digestive upsets and she, she was in a pickle. She didn't enjoy her life. The older woman, 60 year old, she has a family, but the girl, she was very, very upset. And they both didn't want to take antibiotics. They just didn't want to go that route. They want homeopathy to help or whatever else to help. So I did give them a dose of H. pylori 200C in the beginning um, to counteract the effects of presence of H. pylori. And then I talked to them about Ayurvedic reset diet. They stuck with it for about six months. Uh -huh. So as a result, the outcome is no more H. pylori symptoms. The laboratory uh, samples come out fine. Um, they, they are not taking the H. pylori 200C. They are not taking antibiotics or they are not even needed to repeat the Ayurvedic reset diet. They are healthy and they're moving on with their lives. And the girl has a boyfriend. Uh -huh. I like that. She's happy now. Uh -huh. She's getting on with her life. So we can say confidently, having reviewed the history of humanity with relation with hunter-gatherers, the history of humanity with relation to industrialization of food sources and overeating and how chemicals in the food and everything causes uh, food related problems, food as the maintaining cause uh -huh, for various illnesses. We have gone through all of that. I have told you a, a few of the cases that I have encountered and I have encountered many more, but I can't be telling you all of that in a little time. So I have told you all of that. So we have a tool in our hand to say bye-bye to food related maintaining causes. And we have a tool, Ayurvedic Reset Diet, which we welcome into our lives and in our practice. And I hope all of you will be able to get some benefit from this webinar as well as from the book. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you so much, Dr. Vatsula. It was wonderful. A fabulous presentation, and we have refreshed our mind with the Ayurvedic reset diet and many more things to be uh, healthy. So, Dr. Vatsala, do you mind, uh, Dr. Lore has to leave. So, do you mind if we uh, take questions uh, just after uh, the NCH presentation? No Is that problem. okay for you? No problem. Please, Dr. Lodi, okay. I would like to hear what you have to say. Well, um, uh, Kavitha, you can put up my slide presentation. And um, Dr. Vatsala, while Kavitha is doing that, I have a chance to say how honored I am to be sandwiched between your speaking before me and after me. Um, for all participants who haven't heard Dr. Vatsala before, she has a brilliant mind and a warm heart and she's an excellent homeopath. So expanding your practice with her suggestions for diet, I, I, I'm sure will increase everybody's outcomes with patients. So thank you very much, Vatsala. Thank you. thank you so much, Vatsala and Lori, for um, <laughs> understanding. And so we are, you are seeing my slide, right? Yes, yes. I see it. Let us welcome our honorable speaker, Lori Grossman, president of National Center for Homeopathy, NCH. NCH is a very highly prestigious homeopathic organization from United States of America, founded in 1974. And I'm so fortunate to be part of NCH for past 20 years and also a lifetime member of NCH. Today, Lori Grassman will share more information about NCH. Lori Grassman is an experienced and renowned licensed chiropractor and homeopath. She has set up a private practice in New York City, a graduate of Cornell University and Hanneman College of Homeopathy. She also serves as chair of the Department of International Affairs at the American Medical College of Homeopathy and is a frequent lecturer there. Dr. Grassman has also taught at Memorial Sloan 
Catering Cancer Center, the Hospital for Special Surgery, Lee Knox Hill Graduate Nursing Programs at New York University and the College of New Rochelle. Since the fall of the World Trade Towers, Dr. Grossman has served in numerous countries affected by natural disasters, committed to improving the standard of health around the globe. She has trained scores of physicians, nurses from developing nations in the use of homeopathic medicines for some of their country's most pressing concerns. She is very kind and inspirational to everyone. And for more information, visit homeopathycenter.org. And let us welcome Dr. Lori Kressman to our webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kavitha. You are quite kind and generous. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And I will never run roughshod over your introductions ever again. <laughs> so thank <laughs> you. Friendless. Thank you, I remembered. <laughs> Please um, go ahead. So, um, uh, thank you very much. And I am president of the National Center for Homeopathy at a very um, important time in our history. The National Center for Homeopathy was founded way back in 1974 when homeopathy was really at a very quiet time in our history. Homeopathy was very popular at the turn into from the 18th to the 19th century. And then with the um, coming of the, if the pharmaceutical medicines and the transitions that happened in the medical profession, homeopathy became um, almost unheard of in the US, practiced by very few physicians, uh, but kept alive mainly by a lot of home prescribers. So when homeopathy, st when people started looking for more holistic approaches, more integrative approaches, um, approaches that were more in keeping with nature, um, homeopathy started to gain in popularity. And some very interested people in the US, both lay people and physicians, came together and created the National Center for Homeopathy. And their goals were to just raise awareness about homeopathy, promote health through homeopathy, and advocate for access to homeopathy, both the medicines and um, educational programs for the proper use of homeopathy so people use the remedies more effectively. Okay, Kathy, then you can move forward. So education is probably our most important mission. And so we try to provide free education around the globe to people um, who need us in areas where they don't um, have access to either good medical care, and so homeopathy is then looked at as an alternative, or people who have access to good medical care, but they're looking for um, integrative approaches that might be integrated within their overall medical platforms. So we, we maintain a website. I'll let you know that we just created a brand, oh, I have to go back, Kavitha, you skipped. Uh, we have a website. On the website, we have a find a remedy page um, so that you could find remedies to use for various ailments. We have um, practitioners who are listed. So if people um, can't prescribe on their own or they need greater help, they can find practitioners. Um, we offer monthly webinars on a variety of topics. Uh, Dr. Vatsala was talking about mind, body, spirit. Our webinars touch upon all aspects of that, homeopathy for mind, body, and spirit. Our quarterly magazine, Homeopathy Today, is rated very highly every year. That also includes current articles on um, all aspects of health that can be treated effectively and safely with homeopathy. And then, of course, we have our annual conference, where there are two tracks, one track for professionals who want to advance their prescribing skills and a track for newcomers to homeopathy or home prescribers who just want to practice treating their children from mild ailments more safely and effectively. And um, you should know that our new website might have a few glitches. So as we repair it, just be patient for us with us at this time. Okay, Kavitha. Um, some website resources are our directory, I said, of practitioners and of study groups as well. We have advocacy where we teach people how to um, use homeopathy, how to speak to your Congress leaders if you're in the U.S. to advocate for uh, safe access to homeopathy. 
We have an online Materia Medica that's actually being updated right now. We have homeopathy research, infographics and brochures. All of our Homeopathy Today magazines are archived on the website. Um, we have eBooks and white papers on the website as well. Okay, Kavitha. I'm very, very proud of our conference. I had been chair of the conference committee before I became president. The conference is a great place to network with other practitioners, to meet practitioners, to um, meet the homeopathic um, uh, manufacturers who make the remedies, who might be able to help you in your practice with the remedies that you need. Uh, we, we have a vibrant list of speakers and as I said, speakers for both new prescribers and prescribers who've been, you know, who, with far more experience. Here's the copies of our uh, magazine's covers, which we're very, very proud of. There's homeopathy for animals. We sometimes have homeopathy for farmers so that they can use it in agriculture. We have book reviews, um, certainly, uh, features on certain ailments and the remedies that are most effective for those ailments, research papers. And we try to welcome the um, information that is it, it, people can use to stay up to date about all different aspects of the homeopathic community, both in the States and abroad. So we at, like to coordinate with what we call the Homeopathic Action Alliance, where nurses who practice homeopathy, physicians who practice homeopathy, uh, credentialing boards all meet together so that we can stay as one, share the latest with each other and support each other. And NCH acts as kind of like an umbrella to bring us all together so we can become stronger together. Our monthly webinars, some are open um, to the public and oftentimes we have an intro webinar that's open to the public. And if you wanna take whatever you've learned to the next step, then we oftentimes have a next level that's open to our um, members. We have very well-known experienced presenters, which we're very, very proud of. And we try to present topics that are relevant, that um, will give you the skills to work with the issues that are facing you at this time. So whether or not there is a, a you know, we're in the season where there's a lot of flu going around or the start of school where children are nervous about school and have a lot of anxiety. We try to focus on the issues of the time. So they're very current. Um, so um, I just want you to know that um, we can, you can sign on to our website, homeopathycenter.org and become a member. You can gift memberships to friends, use that as a birthday present. Uh, we have both um, domestic and international memberships. Our individual memberships, which are for lay people, are less expensive than the professional members. But we're really excited that this year, if you go to the next slide, we have a lot more gifts that we offer people who um, become members. The next slide, Kavitha, please. So if you become a member, you get a paper copy of Homeopathy Today magazine. You have access to all the um, archived educational and research information. We have a section for practitioner researches. You get a 20% off of a cart when you shop with Boron. Homeopathy House Call is an excellent resource for people who want to need help selecting remedies for ailments, which is provided by Whole Health Now. And lastly, Dana Ullman's Learn How to Use Homeopathic Medicine Kit e-course, which I find fabulous. Even to this day, I still use it. Has great research in it. Has the leading remedies that are with clear indications for, for a, a scores of ailments. So please become a member. We'd love to welcome you, help us. And because we at the National Center would like to honor Kavitha Kukunora's commitment to homeopathy, we are offering a special coupon for anyone who attended this webinar or any of Kavitha's webinars. And you just enter Kavitha 2021 at the checkout to read the discount. So that's our way of welcoming you and thanking Kavitha for all her generous, kind, wonderful work. Lori, that was wonderful, so generous of you. And Lori, do you have any time limit to use the 
coupon like if they uh, when is the end date until which day uh, they which can month? use it throughout 2021 Wonderful. This is a great privilege for everyone to become NCH member. And Lori, just a few seconds. Professor Regina has a special testimonial for NCH. Please. Just Go ahead. Will... Regina, please un unmute. Uh, hello? Please unmute yourself, Regina. Professor Regina. One second. Sharing the screen now, okay? There we here, go. Here goes the video. You're not able to see the... I would like to know, why should someone join... No, Mr. Regina, we are not able to see the screen. Us. Thank you very much. Hello, Professor Regina. Thank you for the interest. In Hello, Dr. Kavita. I would like to know Happy video. Yeah. someone join MCH. Please enlighten us. Thank you very much. Hello, Professor Regina. Thank you for the interest. Professor Regina, we are not seeing the video. Do you want uh, the, uh, Dr. Sweta to play, please? Maybe at her from her end. I share screen. But we are seeing you. We are not seeing the video link. Maybe um, we can uh, ask uh, uh, Dr. Sweta to help us. Absolutely, please. I apologize. No, no, you're fine, Professor Regina. Thank you so much for her having this testimonial. Is it visible now? Yes. Hello, Dr. Kavita. I would like to know, why should someone join NCH? Please enlighten us. Thank you very much. Hello, Professor Regina. Thank you for the interest in, in NCH. So I think I would say that I'm very proud to say that I'm a lifetime member of NCH, National Center for Homeopathy, NCH. And I have enjoyed the membership benefits for the past 20 years. I love the Homeopathy Today magazine, which is for both the general public who wants to know about homeopathy and for the experienced homeopathy practitioners with its very informative and wonderful articles. I would consider NCH as one of the best online homeopathic platforms for the practitioner with the practitioner directory, Medic America, Hepatro database, later with the latest news, events, e-learning webinars, and many more. What makes NCH very special is the annual JHC conference, which brings together world-renowned homeopathic practitioners around the globe with the three-day conference, providing CEOs the continuing educational credits. At the conference, NCH acknowledges great personalities through several awards that recognize those for providing selfless service to homeopaths, homeopathic community, and give us a wonderful opportunity to enhance our knowledge and build new friendships. I'm so honored and sincerely thank NCH for giving me this great opportunity to be a speaker at the Global Summit this year, JHC 2020. I highly support and recommend all homeopaths to be part of NCH and enjoy membership benefits for a very low cost. I thank Lori Grossman, NCH president and the NCH team for the, their hard work and everything they do. Thank you so much. Well, that <laughs> is absolutely lovely. Thank you so very much. And if anyone has any questions about joining the National Center, I'd be more than happy to help them. And Kavitha, if anyone writes to you, you can always forward any email to me. Definitely, um, uh, Dr. Lurie. And if you have any questions, please let us know since Dr. Lurie has still you, she has a very important uh, thing to attend. 
So uh, please feel free to email us. And um, we would like to take privilege to honor your gracious presence at our study group today with our CAS certificate, Lori. Please kindly accept it from our team. Thank and you Dr. very Spencer, much. Please, would you like to present, please? Thank you Thank very. You. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. I'm very honored. Thank you. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Lurie, for giving us this discount coupon and everything. And many will join us and see you at the NCH conference. Yes, I look forward to it. Bye bye. So much, Dr. Watsila, for um, um, this one. And we would like to take some questions, please. I'm ready. Dr. Sweta and Professor Regina, please. Ma'am, there is a one question from Dr. Nitin Jain. He is asking, is there any book regarding this topic? So can you please explain, um, discuss about your book? Uh, my and book where it is on, available. Yeah, my book is on the topic, uh, uh, this Ayurvedic Reset Diet, Radiant Health Through Fasting, Mono Diet and Smart Food Combining. Uh, I have written this book and it is published by Inner Traditions international and uh, this book is available on uh, all the uh, all the bookstores on amazon uh, wherever you can find books you will be able to find this particular book so that's what it is ayurvedic reset diet and i have written it it just came out thank you thank you ma'am so they can visit innertraditions.com right watsala to purchase the book uh, yes, you can visit innertraditions.com and order it online to purchase the book. Yes, correct. Uh, one more question from Dr. Ashok Madan. Uh, he's requesting you to give some hints how we can tell the mothers value uh -huh. of a reset diet for one, two years old children to improve the health. Uh, for one or two years old child, uh, I don't think they should be on any diet. Uh -huh. They have to be allowed to eat a normal healthy food according to their hunger and not by the clock. There was a time in early, early years of pediatrics in the 1940s and 50s, the doctors were very good about telling by the clock, six o'clock, 12 o'clock, two o'clock, five o'clock, they'll go by the clock to say to the child, this is when you're supposed to eat your food. But uh, the best guide for food intake for young children is their own hunger. Avoid the fast food, avoid the junk food, avoid the very highly sugary foods, give them natural healthy fruits and vegetables and whole grains, and that is their diet. They need food to grow. So we cannot put them on any diet. We can only provide them healthy and wholesome food. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is all about the questions. Um, thank you so much, ma'am, for being so patient and kind. Thank you. Hey, all of oh. you disappeared. I don't see anybody. They are what? watching live on Facebook. <laughs> oh, no, I do not see you either, Kavita. Oh, you are not seeing me. Out there. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you for the questions. Nice questions. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, ma'am. Over to you, uh, Dr. Kavita, ma'am. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Vatsala. It was really wonderful and enlightening. And as um, when I met you in 2010, before we eat, we were chanting. Kavita, it was 2008. Sorry, 2000, 2008, first time. At um, um, New York City for Dr. Rajan Shankaran's, and in 2018 at Phoenix, Arizona, uh -huh. at yeah. JHC conference. So we were eating while eating the food. We are, you are chanting the um, 
annapurna stotram so anything whatever that really connected me to that situation that how important everything adds mm -hmm. in our life from getting into the mouth and being healthy thank you so much and any more questions we will take dr watsila and professor regina uh, would you like to say anything please absolutely well i have two things to say first it was an amazing webinar and dr vasala it was spiritual knowledgeable wisdom and all the wellness you generally gener generously offer from your heart it's a bliss I have been blessed being here. And I also would like to share, if you don't mind, uh, the testimonial you gave to the Dr. Kavita. Kavita, your boundless enthusiasm for promoting homeopathy and providing continuing education opportunities to students and practitioners is admirable. I wish you the very best for your pro bono work with Ka. I am delighted that you have found space in your life for doing this unique and selfless seva for homeopathy. May your vital force keep you shining energetically and on top of your game. And I humbly added, Kavita is a kind-hearted person, calm and giving. She helps people by hearing out their needs and empowers them to problem solving, either in health issues or in studies or basic needs as food supplies, education, and much more through Caving Friendly Foundation. Kavita is like a true friend in need, indeed for each and every one. And I would like to remember all of our viewers that uh, they're having the Henry and Williams Professional Service Award established on 1000. It honors homeopathic professional who demonstrated service, leadership, dedication to the homeopathy community. It could be in the form of a clinical award, educational, webinars, anything that offers to society some uh, bliss from homeopathy. So I thank you all for being here. And I say blessings to the universe. Namaskarans, Dr. Vasala, it was a wonderful experience. Dr. Kavita, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Regina. That was a wonderful message to Dr. Vatsala. And um, Dr. Vatsala, we would like to take privilege to honor your gracious presence at our study group today for your precious time with our CAR certificate. Please kindly accept it. Thank you. Just a moment. Hold on. I'm taking a picture of today. I will send, I will, we will also send you Dr. Vatsala and um, Hello, thank everyone you. is quiet. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much for the certificate. Thank yeah, thank you so much. Um, and I thank our homeopathy study group entire team for the continuous support from the creating from the flyers to the certificates, so much is there, newsletters, website updates, webinars, and um, there is a lot in the social media. Everyone, they were, were very hardworking and dedicated and thank you so much. And I would like to, um, with your privilege, I would like to announce the upcoming events, Dr. Vatsala. Mm -hmm. On February 7th, we have Kim Ilya, founder of Whole Health Now, who speaks about long-term case management, same time at 9 p.m. And on February 21st, we have Kate Perch about COVID-19 research and updates, and also president of California Homeopathy Medical Society, Kathleen Shebel. We have many more renowned homeopaths lined up for car webinars, like 
to name few dr bavishya joshi dr sachindra joshi misha norland dr divya chabra fredrick shrines gay grapel trop dr isaac golden and many more and um, we appreciate all the audience for part, uh, for their precious uh, presence and undivided attention and dr sweta would you like to say anything please and the uh, car volunteers please um, um, uh, you can speak if you have any thing to share have any questions please thank you dr kavita ma'am and first of all i want to thank dr vatsla ma'am uh, for sharing her beautiful knowledge and wisdom and yes it is the need of our and we have to understand that our system needs to be reset time to time so thank you so much ma'am this one is really great and uh, i want to thank all the viewers for joining us and we have today with us dr deepa from uh, our volunteer batch uh, 2020 so i would like i would request her to please uh, start her video and if you want to say something please dr deepa perhaps she's away Mm -hmm. Dr. Deepa. Yes. Hello, Dr. Deepa. Welcome. Hello. Yeah. Hello to everyone. Very nice uh, uh, webinar today. Yeah, uh, Dr. Vatsala, ma'am. yes we really enjoyed it yeah basic small small things but that will make a lot of difference in our day to day life and uh, we know the knowledge but adaptation is uh, one thing to make it adapt so repetitive yes. webinars like this will make us all on a track correct and um, surely uh, about the new we will join we will uh, join the international uh, uh, with the uh, and do the needful things yes. join the american thank you dr kavita ma'am yeah hello good to see all uh, regina hello shweta <laughs> so dr deepa thank you so much for felicitating our uh, mentor and the founder director of ka homeopathy study group uh, so we have oh, something for yes. you and i would like to play just a second okay this is dr shweta singh ka ji Professor Regina, do you receive my book? No, not yet, dear. Okay. Whenever I get the mail, I'll let you know. Thank you very much yes. for thinking of me. I'll let yes. you know. Thank you. Yes, yes. Ian was also sending me Qigong medications, and it never came on the mail. Okay. Kaji, administrate. You would This like to see the video now, made in your honor, Doctor Deepa. Today is a celebration. We're having Dr. Vasala. We're having so many important people around us. It's a bliss. This is Dr. Shweta Singh, Kaji Administrator. taking privilege to read dr deepa's letter felicitating mm -hmm. our ka founder and director dr kavita kukur dear dr kavita madam this thing happened during 2020 is meeting you and be a part of ka family i wish this new year provides you with enough reasons to be happy and you have uncountable days filled with joy and mirth i hope the book punch kosha homeopathy is divine science makes you smile Learned many things from you. Lots of love. Always seeks your blessings. 
a shawl and garland as a symbol of felicitation from me, Dr. Deepa. Thank you so much, Dr. Deepa, for the surprise felicitation and sending your book, Panchakosha. You are a great asset for the Kaa study group. Ka is so honored to receive your precious gifts, your book, garland, and beautiful shawl. I can say it is one of the best books I ever read and would recommend to any interested folks who are looking for holistic approaches. Dr. Deepa clearly describes five koshas and the connection of homeopathy with allied sciences, laws of nature, etc. It is a very nice book and connects to the universe, chakras, and integrates organon philosophy with case studies. From Dr. Kavita Kukunur, President and CEO, Ka, founder of Ka Homeopathy Study Group. Thank you. So such, <laughs> this is very emotional movement. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Dr. you. Deepa, Thanks. All that goes to God, to the universe, to entire study group team. And in presence of Dr. Vatsala, we are receiving this. That's a divine thing. So thank you so much. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Vatsala, would you like to say anything or anyone wanted to anything before we wrap? Hmm. Uh, I just want to say from my heart, uh, just a word, thank you, is not enough. Uh, but that's the word we have at our disposal in our vocabulary to say. Mm -hmm. So I say thank you. And that comes with a lot of gratitude for all the good work that you are doing and you're motivating your team to do. Uh -huh. okay. that's a, because we can try to carry the entire burden on our shoulder and consider it a burden or the same work that you're doing you can look at it as a prasad from God, distribute mm -hmm. it to all your mm -hmm. team and inspire everybody to come along. That's the good thing. Uh -huh. So I send you a lot of blessings. I'm entitled to send you blessings, Kavita, because I have a lot of gray hair on my head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I send you a lot of blessings. You succeed and you be happy in your life. Uh -huh. God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And all these web, all these webinars for, uh, come, are uh, viewed from different countries: India, USA, New Zealand, South America, Australia, and many more. Even in the midnight, so they are all uh, um, with. Uh, they, they will get more knowledge about this Ayurvedic reset diet and many more. Thank you so much. And um, just one question, Kavita. Uh, one person in the message. Uh, Dr. Ashok Madan, he has asked for a full list of my books where they are going to be available. Could you please communicate to him? We will or send, send, me, yes, or send, send me his uh, contact information so I can write to him myself. De definitely, Dr. Vatsila. We'll provide him all the information so that he can also reach you and reach us for any more queries. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we wrap it up now. Very good. And, um, Yes, I think we are good. And uh, thank you so much once again to all the participants for your precious time and stay tuned to our future webinars. And uh, jot form has been posted by Dr. Sveta in the chat. In case, um, please uh, try to fill it to get the certificate. And if you haven't got it, um, um, you can email us at castedigroup at gmail.com. And stay healthy and happy. And Dr. Sweta and Professor Ejana, would you like to wrap? It was a wonderful experience, priceless learning. It was blessings from God through you, Dr. Vasala. You have powered on us your wisdom and your generous heart that makes the difference on a modern world. We are very happy through the media, through a computer connection to being able to be in your presence. I bow at you. Namaskaramas. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you all around. We conclude it now. Okay. So we sign off. And Dr. Sveta, yes, would um, any, you want to say anything? 
before we sign off yes ma'am thank you so much all of you for joining us today you can reach us at castudygroup@gmail.com and you can follow our youtube channel for all the recordings of every webinar uh, with the name kavita kukunur and you can follow our uh, social media platforms uh, with the name ka homeopathy study group at instagram facebook Twitter and LinkedIn. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope everybody has submitted uh, the Google form so they can get their certificate. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Sweta. Thank you, Dr. Vatsala, Dr. Lori Krasnan, and Professor Rikna. Any side, Kedi Guruji. Yes. And all the participants. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Would you like to play the um, music, please? <laughs> Indian program cannot be without music and dancing <laughs>